You hear all the bull about diet and exercise. Carbs are evil. Do more cardio. Never eat bread or cookies again. Just do a juice cleanse. We get it. We fell for all of the BS too. It's time to go right to the source with the truth about how to live a healthy, sustainable lifestyle. I am Liz. And I'm Becca. We are your nutrition educators, and this is The Food Code. Hello, hello. Wednesday. Last Wednesday of 2021. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. I literally like, y'all, this year went by so fast. I, it's a blur. I feel like we thought 2020 was never ending and we were really excited for 2021. And then 21, 2021, just like blink of an eye is gone. I know. It's that, insane. That is why today, our friends, we are talking about taking some time and reflecting on where your time went. What did you do? I think that... It- I think that New Year's resolutions are one of those like love hate things because I I am all for people making changes in their life. Like I I'm I think a lot of people take like one stance or the other, you know, like hating on New Year's resolutions and hating on people making big change in their life. And I'm like, dude, go for it. But what I don't love is when people continue to kind of live in this circle of doing the same thing and it always failing. Like you need to look in the mirror and you need to evaluate where you succeeded and where you failed and where you maybe continue to fail or like find resistance in your life and really make change around that. But I'm not going to hate on someone when they're like, I'm going to go change my life for the better. I'm not going to be like new year's resolutions never work. You shouldn't even try. No, like go freaking try, go do it, but have intention around it. And I think that's where a lot of people miss the, you know, miss the mark on this is they, think about the next like 30 days and they're like, I'm going to just remove all foods and I'm just going to drink water and celery juice. And that's going to be the solution to my problems. But we need to look a little bit deeper, but I'm all for people being like, you know what? I want to make a change to my life. I want to do big things. I want to feel better and all of that. But I think the problem lies with like how people approach that and not reflecting on the past, not reflecting on things that they have maybe you know, had missteps with before and what they really need to change. They just think like, I'm just going to take this action and hope it works out. And so today hopefully will be helpful to see maybe how to approach this in a more calculated manner and a more effective manner. Um, because I, I'm all about the intention. Like I'm all about people wanting to better themselves. And I, I get kind of frustrated almost when people like hate on new year's resolutions so much, um, and hate on, you know, people trying to make big change because I'm for that. Like yeah. you go do you and improve your life. Yeah. I think the biggest thing, and we'll talk a little bit more about this um, coming up in the next couple of episodes, but the biggest thing is being really intentional as Becca was saying with what these resolutions or these goals are that you're going to set for yourself in 2022, because it's one thing to say, I want to lose weight. It's another thing to fully understand and emotionally connect to your deeper why and having that as your driving force on the days that you don't feel motivated, the days that you don't want to do anything right after January 30th and the first 30 days are over and you realize shit, motivation's not there anymore. Um, understanding why this goal is really, really important to you. And part of that can stem from doing this first step, which is really taking time, creating some space. So, you know, I would say get 20, 30 minutes by yourself in a quiet place and reflect upon 2021 and reflect upon what went good. And maybe, you know, what were some of the goals that you thought about last year at the beginning of year that you didn't accomplish? Because reflection is something that I think is often overlooked, right? It's, we don't want to face the hard truth sometimes of, the fact that maybe we didn't show up the way that we said we were going to. And it's really a key element to having the self-awareness. We talk a lot about having self-awareness, right? But it's, it's a key element to having that self-awareness and helping you identify roadblocks and current patterns. This is one thing that we see a lot when, you know, clients start with us in our coaching program. They maybe don't realize 
how many glasses of wine they have per week or how many bites, licks and tastes of things that they take mm-hmm. or how many times they go out to eat, how many times they skip workouts and still we, until we start tracking this stuff. And so that's one thing that when you're doing this, one, I would say come from a place where you're not judging yourself, but you are just taking a really hard look in the mirror at what went well and what didn't go well and then assess and analyze why didn't those things go well. Like, was I making excuses? Were there legit load roadblocks that came up? Like, how am I going to fix those things? Because those roadblocks are always going to happen. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter where you're at in life. You're always going to run into different roadblocks. So really, you know, commit to doing this and reflecting upon where you can improve going into 2022 because next year's a new opportunity, guys. Like tomorrow's a new opportunity. Heck, today is a new opportunity. We don't have to speak to this in the way of, you know, New Year's resolutions, but take time today, tomorrow, whenever you have time and really sit down and reflect and ask yourself some hard questions. Yeah. So we have some questions that I think, you know, get some pen and paper, write these down um, because I think these are really good things. And I think a lot of times people like think back on the year and they're like, oh, I wasted another year or like I wasted my time that like I should have taken to lose the weight or, you know, improve my relationship or whatever it is it's only wasted if you don't learn from it. And if you don't take things from it, like that is why reflection is so helpful. It is never a failure. It is a learning process. Everything is a learning process. Like you guys, Liz and I have fallen flat on our face time and time again with our personal lives, sometimes with our business. Like I actually was reading um, something today that Andy Frisella sends out emails every day. And today's was so good. Like it was like, how do you not get burned out? And unfortunately in entrepreneurship guys, you can't like it just, it's part of it. Like you grind through all of it and you reflect on where you had missteps and what you did wrong and what you can improve upon. Like, you know, I, I get the whole, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I want to continue to evolve what we do in terms of teaching women more and more every year. Like, I think that we're already really good at it, but we can always be better at it and we can always do it in a more effective way. So we're currently reflecting on our past year and the structure of our programs. How can we make this better? How can we make it more, you know, accessible to people? How can we help a broader population of people? How can we connect with more people at once? And so we're in the mix right now of trying to create that and trying to learn from what we didn't have last year, even though we had a great year, we had a much improved year on the year prior, like the reflection piece is helping us continue to grow because we're never wanting, like, we don't want to be complacent. So in the past year, I think it's good to reflect on what was good and what wasn't like, how did you change the most this past year? Was it in a positive way? Was it in a negative way? What was the most challenging for you? Like, what do you find you continued to be challenged by in the past year? What did you learn from that? Did you learn anything from that? Do we need to like kind of evaluate and take what maybe we learned from it? Are you on a path that you feel is truly aligned for you? I think this is such an important one. So many people live their life just getting through each day. Mm -hmm. Like, and our, our coach Jen last night on our live did a really good job of explaining this if you're not growing, you're dying. And if you're not learning, you're not ever going to grow and evolve. And so what a lot of people do is they get stuck in their day to day, they get stuck in their mundane day to day. And what they turn to for excitement and for, you know, find trying to find purpose because people don't have purpose in their mundane day to day lives is they turn to food, they turn to alcohol, they turn to television, they turn to what I would say is negative habits that they're trying to find purpose and they're trying to bring happiness in. And sure, do these things bring temporary happiness? Sometimes, yeah, but they don't create true purpose for us. And so we end up just living our life unhappy. And so I think evaluating like, where did that, what path are you on? And is it a path that is bringing you purpose? And if it isn't, you got to dig deep and figure out what you want to do. Like, maybe this isn't a total career change, Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, you know, getting a divorce. Maybe it's reevaluating your relationship though and working on improving it. Like we're not trying to ruin people's lives. We're not trying to like really, you know, overhaul everything, but maybe your life does need an overhaul guys. I think that sometimes we don't question these things. Sometimes we're just like, oh, this is how it is. This is how life is, you know? No, it doesn't have to be that way. Sadly for a lot of people, it is because they just accept that. We're not about accepting that. And hopefully if you're a listener to our podcast, like you aren't about accepting that either, but we need to evaluate 
And a lot of people don't step back and evaluate. I think that's the biggest problem. So I think those are all some really good questions to ask yourself. Yeah. And I would take that a bit further too. Like when you're looking at relationships, this could be, you know, your significant other, it could be with your kids, it could be with your coworker, your boss, whatever. Like look at what relationships serve you and what relationships don't serve you. Maybe there's things that you need to start saying no to, right? Like maybe there's events that you know that you always overconsume alcohol at, or you always, you know, skip your workout the next day because you stay out too late, whatever it is. Like look at who in your life, who is in your circle and are they bringing you up? Or are they pulling you down? And again, maybe it's not that you get a divorce or you stop being friends with somebody by any means, but it is that you just take a, an evaluation and say, okay, these people in my life bring me up. I need more of them in my life. And these people don't bring me up as much as I would like, or they're not, you know, in a place that I admire to be. And so maybe I need to spend a little bit less time with them, right? Because we are the average of the five people we surround ourselves with. That's honestly why Becca and I, we really don't have many friends. I probably have like three or four really good friends, but I mean, having a toddler, like we don't re see them like every maybe mm -hmm. month or month and a half, we might see them. Um, you're just busy and you're working. And sometimes like for us, at least like our work takes precedent over going out and spending $300 on a night out sometimes, you know? And yeah. so I would take an evaluation of who is serving you, who's bringing you up, who's pulling you forward. And the same thing like with your community, right? Maybe you need to find a gym. Maybe you need to join a community that's going to help support you on this path to changing your mindset, changing, you know, your nutritional intake. So you can feel better. You can feel more alive. Um, you can have more energy, you know, all of these things that you want to accomplish and you want to feel fulfilled with, but you currently don't. It's time to take an assessment of who's going to get you to that place that, you know, is going to put you there and who is just going to continue to pull you back. So I think that was really good to talk on in terms of like purpose, yeah. because yeah. I think a lot of people, when they lack purpose, they get complacent mm -hmm. and they get comfortable. Well, well, I think also like just t going back a little bit to what you said, like we don't have a lot of, we don't have a huge group of friends and I'll be honest, a lot of people probably hear that and are like, well, that doesn't sound very fun. Or like you should have, you know, a social life to have enjoyment, enjoyment in your life. You guys, I a hundred percent agree, but I, I can without a doubt say this, I do not miss going and getting sloshed on Saturday nights. Like I used, that used to be my life. I would live for the weekends. I would live for going and starting to drink on Saturday and like quote unquote having fun. And then I would be miserable on Sunday. And like, it didn't bring me fulfillment. It didn't bring me purpose. It didn't bring me happiness. It brought me temporary. This is pretty fun. And then three days after of I'm so miserable. Why did I do that again? And so like, it's again, an external thing. And I'm not saying I'm never going to drink again. Like I, I, I enjoy drinks. I enjoy a glass of wine here and there, but for me, I'd rather have a date night with my husband. I'd rather, you know, get together on, you know, a vacation or something like that. But like on the weekly, every week, just doing something to like numb the fact that I don't have purpose in my life. I'm not about that anymore. And so I, again, have a very close knit group of people that I consider friends and I consider people that support me in my life and support what I'm doing. But I would, I never regret giving up some of those things. Like they did not serve me. And for me, going out and drinking or eating a bunch of crap food and like calling that happiness, that's just not what my life is about anymore. And I'm much happier now that it isn't, to be honest. Um, and I think a lot of people, when they're on the brink of like wanting to change, they think that they miss those things a lot because they haven't yet built the momentum and like the true feeling of feeling amazing and having that purpose. Um, and they think of the changes that they're trying to make as temporary. Mm -hmm. And so they miss those things because they don't start to identify as a different person. Like they just think like, oh, these changes are temporary. I can go back to that stuff, that stuff that I think is so fun. And so it's like not the right mindset to go into it with when it's always this temporary change. Yeah. And I think too, it's like people when they say like, I'm not going to drink or whatever, it's like, well, then what do you want to do? Guys, there's plenty of things that you can do. Like one of the things that we've been doing is we've having like dinner parties with friends. That's been really fun. We make mm -hmm. unique food. You know, we just spend some time together. We have a couple of drinks, but it's nothing like you know, what we did in college or, you know, post-college, right? Where you go out and you stay out until one or two o'clock in the morning. You can go bowling, you go ice skating, you can go, you know, winter activities or hiking or whatever. There's a lot of things that you can do. So take that time and evaluate like the path that you are on, does this align with you and who's on that path with you? 
Okay. And then also let's dive a little bit deeper and look at maybe we didn't accomplish some of the goals that we set forth for 2021. Well, maybe there were some really great changes though that you made. We always talk about micro goals, right? Micro changes, celebrate those things. So reflect, okay. Maybe my huge goal was to lose 50 pounds, but I only lost 30 pounds. That's still a huge win, right? There should be no end or finish line to this game, right? Living a healthy lifestyle should be something that you are fully bought into and you are aligned with, your values align with, because it's who you have chosen to become. So celebrate those micro goals and you know, the micro, I should say, wins that you've had this year. And then on the flip side of this, if you can't think of anything in terms of things that have really gone well, ask yourself, why? Why have I consistently fallen off? Why was I consistently starting over every Monday? Did I not have the support that I needed? Was I self-sabotaging every 7, 14, 21 days? Was it because I was feeling bored? I felt stuck. I felt, again, complacent, unmotivated because I lacked purpose and my journey lacked purpose. You guys, losing weight, getting into shape, there's so much more purpose than <laughs> anybody can ever imagine. Like one of my posts that I'm getting ready to write is like 10 habits that changed my life. None of that has to do with the number on the, the pants that I wear. None of it has to do with the number on the scale. It literally has to do with the values that I've instilled and the way that I show up for myself because that's what gives me purpose every day. So if you're feeling like you're stuck, unmotivated, you're complacent, you're in this place where you're just, you know, living a mediocre life, you got to get uncomfortable. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that the, the biggest thing here is like you said, I'm always starting over. I think that's a big thing that a lot of people face. And something that I have realized is I have to have like relentlessness to my commitment to what I want to do for myself. And that isn't giving up on myself ever. Like, for example, yesterday I started a new, like little kind of 45 day commitment to myself. And one of the pieces got a little hard and I was like, you know, I could always just wait until Wednesday when like, I know this will be easier and some things will be in place by that point. And I'm like, no, I'm going to give the very best shot that I can give today. And if it doesn't happen by the end of the day, it doesn't happen. But like, I'm not just going to give up before I even give this attempt and understand everyone faces resistance at different times in life. Like everyone experiences complacency too. I think that this is something that like you see people and it seems like they're always winning. They're all no, like you guys, a lot of people fall into that oh, well, it's just moderation. It's just enjoying a couple things here and there. And then that slips and slides. And that turns into like, I have a habit of eating chocolate every day. Like it is, it is so easy to slide into that and not even realize it. But the biggest part of this is taking a step back and reflecting. Like people get stuck in those places because they just accept it is what it is. And we don't ever evaluate like what went wrong what, you know, what do I keep messing up with? And I think that's the biggest piece that, you know, personally as coaches, we bring value to with people is like a lot of people struggle having awareness of themselves and of their current habits and routines and their patterns and their thought processes and identifying what needs to change and what needs to be put in place. And that is why what we have evolved for 2022, our new program that we're going to be coming out with next week. So make sure you, you know, follow us on Instagram, follow our emails, um, is all about that. It is about the number one thing I think gets in people's way. It's not knowledge. It's not, you don't know what to eat. You don't know what not to eat. It's yourself, you guys. It's yourself and not having awareness of yourself and awareness of what you are doing day in and day out, probably mindlessly, that is holding you back. And when things get hard, what you do, like that is 100% people are, you guys, I think I heard a, a stat the other day that was like 90% of what you do every day is mind, like it's subconscious. It's literally like you do something today, you're going to do the exact same thing tomorrow how you like the, what time you can take a shower, how you shower, like what body part you wash first, when you brush your teeth, the thoughts that you have, the things that you consume, the justifications you make. Like, I think it was 90% of the thoughts that you have are literally subconscious. You do them automatically. And so if you want to change, 
you got to start becoming aware of what is automatic right now. And a lot of people just aren't good at that. I'll be honest. Like they, they don't, they don't realize it. And so being able to have someone on the outside, that's helping you evaluate those things is priceless because it is, it is literally changing your life. It's not just a temporary, it's not just a forcing yourself into a 30 day, you know, remove all carbs. Like that's what I need to do. I just need to stop eating carbs. No, you need to evaluate what thoughts you're telling yourself every day. You need to evaluate what habits you're stuck in right now. And that is where the true gold lies. But people just don't do that. They think that, you know, oh, it's just this. It's just a simple fix. It's just simple thing that I need to change. It's not, it's not simple. It's, it's doable and it's, you know, it takes work. But it's not this like, oh, it's just this easy, quick fix thing. The Food Code Podcast is brought to you by Fit Mom Lifestyle. If you're interested in our individualized coaching that we always talk about and how we may be able to help you like we help our clients in accomplishing optimal health and losing weight and achieving their goals, you can click the link in the show notes and you can actually schedule a free 15 to 20 minute call with either of us. We would love to talk to you. Yeah, I think sometimes people get so stuck in those routines that it's like they almost black out and like block out the real truth of how many times they went out to eat this week or ordered food in to work or went hit the drive through right? Because it's just part of what they do and they what don't realize. Bites of things. Mm-hmm. It might even not be as big of like, I go to get fast food. It's like I took 15 different bites of things today as I walked through the kitchen mm-hmm. in the total for the day. Because I think that is, because a lot of people are like, I don't eat out that much. I eat pretty healthy but they don't realize the hundreds of calories that they're consuming from like the bites of foods that they take throughout the day. Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. Well, I realized that for myself this week. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's one of those just automatic things that you do subconsciously because again, it's a habit that you've created that you don't even realize until you've taken time to reflect or be honest and track everything or have a coach call you out on it and say, Hey, over the course of the last six weeks here, I see that you've had, four beers every other day. You know, they're like, oh, they just isolate. I just had four beers. It's not that much. Well, then you say it's like like every other day I'm being like, I'm extreme here, right? Let's say like two beers or something like that, whatever it is. But when you create this habit and you just think isolated, right? Like I just had two glasses of wine. You don't think of that accumulation effect that we've talked about. And so that's why having somebody who can take that 10,000 look, uh, foot view, look into your life and call you out on these things and say, Hey, this is a problem. You know, whatever it is, it doesn't even have to be alcohol. It can be sweets. It can be bites of things. It can be, you know, going out to eat, whatever it is. And the amount of times that you skip your workouts, like, Hey, you didn't follow through on your commitment. And I noticed this is a trend in the last six weeks. We've only gone to the gym four times yet. You keep saying that your goal is to go to the gym four times every week. So let's break this down. Let's remove these roadblocks that are preventing us from doing the things that we say we're going to do and really get relentlessly committed. And here's the great news, guys. No matter what has happened in this past year, last year, two years, three years, four years, five years, however long you've been at this thing wanting to change or thinking about changing, you have the opportunity to create a brand new clean slate to start fresh, right? Not just as we turn the chapter into 2022, but every single day, every day you are alive you have the opportunity to evolve and improve. It just depends upon what you want to do with that time. Because we've said it before, you've heard it, not just from us. Everybody has the same 24 hours in a day. So what we want you to do before we start working on setting goals for 2022 is imagine the best version of yourself. How do you speak to yourself? How do you dress? How do you speak to others? Who do you surround yourself with? Again, like we talked about this, like maybe that best version of you, the person that you really want to become, this life that you want to create, maybe there's some things that you realize you need to let go of, whether it's relationships, whether it's habits, right? You Maybe you just need to set some boundaries. Again, this could be with family, significant others, your work. This is something I'll talk more about next week with some of the reflections that I've had and some of the things that I want to set boundaries on my life because I'm not great at it. And it's something that I need to continuously, you know, challenge myself to do, right? I've talked before about not messaging on Sundays. What do I find myself falling back into a lot of times? Working on Sundays, messaging on Sundays. And so that's one of my quarter one targets, which I'll talk more Monday is like, 
I'm not doing that anymore. I'm either deleting apps or going on airplane mode or do not disturb. I have to take different actions than I've taken in the past to follow through with that commitment. And so Becca and I, we are here not reflecting upon ourselves, but giving you the tools so that you can take this reflection and evaluation if you're ready to level up in 2022 and get out of your head, step into action and start executing. Okay. So again, as we wrap this up, I just want to remind you, don't place judgment on yourself as you go through this process, right? Like don't worry about what might happen or get caught up in the fear of failure. Or if am I doing this right, just start putting pen to paper, go through the list of questions. We'll place them in the show notes for you. Then start imagining what that ideal self looks like. And let's start working towards that. Let's start taking daily actions and steps and actually executing instead of just thinking about doing these things. Yeah. I think a big thing around this is someone actually asked today on my post, cause I'm, I'm doing kind of this 45 day commitment to myself. And they're like, I've been trying to instill habits and I keep struggling. Like, how do you implement this? And one of the main things that I have found is make or break with me. I have to schedule my day out. Like I have to put time and put action into that time. Cause if I just have intentions every day, like right now I'm trying to exercise, go for a short walk, read a book. I'm sorry, read, you know, read, certain during the day, study during the day and track and weigh my food, that's time consuming. If I do not diligently plan out that time and then aside from that plan time to have downtime with my family and commit to that, it never gets done. If I just have intentions at the beginning of the day, they never get into place. I have to relentlessly plan them in. I have to get ahead of it. I have to get ahead of all the things that might come into that day to get in my way because they will. Things will come into my day to get in my way. They have already happened today. And I'm already having to scramble to fix and adjust and pivot. I'm not going to give up. There's no chance I'm going to give up because I've committed to myself. But we have to plan to be able to execute on the things that we want for ourselves. Because most people just have intentions. They only get that far. They only get to the place of wanting things. And putting them into action is a whole nother beast that you have to get ahead of every single day. And you have to do it relentlessly. And then I told myself, like, I've just simply decided there is no other option. You you burn the boat, guys. You burn the boat that got you to the island. There is no turning back. There is no starting over. You are there and you are fighting for yourself every single day. And that commitment is just literally relentless. Like I ha- I will not fail. I've just chosen that for myself. And I think a lot of people stay in this wishy-washy place of try. I'm just going to try as hard as I can. God, there is no should, try. We should put that up there with the same word is should you either do should or you don't. and try <laughs> you and either moist do or you don't. these are all my least favorite words <laughs> oh god moist oh that one um all my least favorite words yeah i i agree with you and, and it's funny because people literally overthink about these things that they paralyze them and you know to in action they paralyze themselves mm-hmm. and so you just basically as becca is saying like there is no other there's no if ands or buts right you do it you figure it out like Andy Frisella, I don't know if you guys follow Andy Frisella, but he has the 75 heart challenge, right? I remember a few years ago, he was talking about all these different obstacles. Like this guy runs multiple companies while he doesn't have children. He has That's the one thing, the very, one thing that I still very, <laughs> doesn't very, have kids. <laughs> very, very busy schedule. Right. And he still gets it done. And he basically, I mean, he talks about how he used to go to the bar on the weekend and just light it up with the boys, you know, Sunday fun day or whatever. And, you know, they would just get smashed, eat all this like really shitty fried foods at the bar and whatever. And he basically said that was one of the hardest things for him in the beginning was, you know, losing that social aspect until he shifted, you know, and and realized those things didn't matter to him. They didn't serve him. But he said, even in the face of temptation, like around family at parties and events or Emily, his wife, was actually writing her cookbook during the time he did his first 75 hard challenge. And inside that cookbook, she has a lot of different sweet treats. Well, you are on no cheat meals in 75 hard. And he viewed those things as cheat meals, right? Even though they were protein based, aka here, like healthier, he was like, no. That is not a part of my plan. And so it was really challenging. And he said, instead of thinking about maybe I'll, you know, do this after she finished writing the cookbook or, you know, I'll just include it into my plan so it's not a cheat meal. He instead every day looked at that as an opportunity to conquer the challenge. 
to go to the event or to be in the house when she was baking and not drink and not have, you know, a baked good or whatever it was. And I think that's a really great way to put it because a lot of people get caught up in this, like, oh, I'm missing out on something and they have FOMO. Listen, I'm going to be laid on you really, really hard here. You can have any of the shit anytime you want when you're a grown adult and you can drive yourself to the store or the restaurant or wherever it is to get whatever it is that you want. You have to decide I've lived that life. You have We've lived that life. We have. I, you guys, it's nothing special. There's nothing Going that you're missing out every on. Saturday. No, I mean, like I've been there, done that. And you know, what's funny the more and more people that I talk to, and maybe Liz, you experience this too. The more and more people I talk to, I think we're in a kind of a weird age right now where like, there's still some people that are doing that, that maybe aren't married, don't have kids that are like still going out every weekend, getting crazy. And then there's also people that are like kind of getting a little bit older and they're like, I don't do that anymore. Like I just, it doesn't serve me. And I think we're kind of in that middle. Like we're not yet in the forties where like, you can't do that. You just can't like your body doesn't recover the same, but we still have some of the younger people that we hang around with our friends with are in same spaces as that, like are like still go hard. Um, but like, we've been there, done that. Like that is how I look at it. I've listen, I can go do that whenever I want right now. It doesn't serve me. Maybe someday again, that'll serve me in some way. Maybe I'll enjoy that again. But like right now, what serves me is being the best freaking version of myself. And that does not get included in that. Yeah. Being like out of mind when I'm drinking or like waking up foggy and slightly hungover without a good night of sleep, like those things just don't serve me anymore. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not trying to be a downer here. I'm just thinking like, okay, you can go and have your mimosas on Sunday. I'm going to go get a lift in and spend some time with my kids and I'm going to crush this day. Like that's what I want. And it's to each their own guys. But if you are unhappy and you're trying to numb yourself with those things, that is when we need some reevaluation. That is when we need to kind of level up and understand, reflect and realize like maybe that's what's getting in my way. The very things that I think I have joy in, maybe that's what is holding me back. Mm -hmm. so, just some reflection yeah. for this 21. The last thing that we'll say here, and, and then we'll get into Friday fire, which is going to be really good. And then Monday is going to be good too. But kind of going back to what Becca was just talking about with, you know, the fear of missing out and, you know, thinking about like, what will I have to, what will I have to give up if I push myself and I challenge myself and I want to create, you know, different habits and routines for myself. Think about it this way. You think that there's a, a fear here of missing out on something special. But the reality is what you're missing out on is the results that you want and the feeling that you are going to have of being so fucking proud of the changes that you've made that none of that other shit matters anymore. Somebody asked us yesterday on our live, what are some things that like are your, um, what was the question? The pleasures, guilty pleasures. And uh -oh. I don't have I don't any, really have any, I don't have yeah. any guilty pleasures anymore because again, I have made a lifestyle transformation to where those things don't phase me. Like, no, there's really, if I only want them. I'll eat them. Yeah. There's, there's really just, only I one thing I want. And that's my homemade cinnamon rolls on Christmas day. And the rest of the time it's like, okay, maybe a Molly's cupcake here or there, but that's not something that controls us anymore. Cause we've done the work, mm -hmm. the mental, the emotional work that it takes to make a true lifestyle change. So when you're worried about fear of missing out, Instead of thinking about all the shit that you're going to miss out on in your current situation, think about missing out on how you're going to feel when you actually level up and you actually show yourself that you're capable of doing the hard things and you get the weight off and you have better energy and you sleep through the night and you break some of these bad habits that are keeping you chained to the life that you don't want right now. So with that, we'll wrap it up. You got anything else to add? Nope. Okay. That is a reflection. We got a lot more coming at you in the new year. Thank you for listening to The Food Code. If this episode resonated with you, please share, rate, and review as this helps us reach others around the world. With that, thank you for listening. We'll be back soon. Love you guys.